Welcome. Hi, everyone. So when I did the boy child uh, topic, I got a lot of backlash on my DM from female activists. Some were very kind. I can't say everybody was mean. Uh, but uh, I think it's time we talked about this. And I do not want to come off as um, supporting men only and backlashing women. I want you to understand that for us to move forward as a community, we cannot have two camps, camp women and camp men. We need to collectively think what is wrong in our community and make those necessary changes. So if you become a female activist and you're so defensive that uh, men did this to us, men do this to us, or blame everything that has happened to us as women, to be a men, men are causing it, is rather naive, you know, or rather we are trying to run away from our own problems. I will say this, the female, um, the feminism in Mombasa towns is overrated. It is overrated, it is an exhausted topic. If you really want to do female empowerment, please go to the villages. That's where the empowerment of women is much needed. And I'm sure they don't have the internet. So we need to get onto those buses. I will, if you have a program you can do, I'll be the first one on those buses. Go to the villages where teenage pregnancies are very high, where girls are getting married at 12 years old. But we have quite evolved from that in Mombasa. And the most problems we have with women, or women, the, the problems we have are caused by ourselves. 99% are caused by us and not men. So before we transfer all our issues to say that men are the culprit for 100% of our problems, let us look at ourselves first. You know? What is it that we are doing wrong? Alhamdulillah, we have empowered girls, we have lawyers, we have microbiologists, we have doctors. Um, in career-wise, career we have, girls have really, really, really moved up in the cities and in the towns. But one thing, um, what empowerment are we doing once we have our careers, once girls have gotten their education? You end up getting married and the problems you face after marriage, you know, no one has empowered you for that. We go back into that same cycle of that. It doesn't matter how much educational, uh, meaning dark. I want to see even what's going on out there. So sorry for that. But we want to, we we want to do all this empowerment of uh, careers and education. But then we leave out the the essence of that. Eventually, when we get married, eventually when we have our own children, have we been empowered about that? And we have constantly and continuously been shoved this uh, thought in our minds that before our grandparents, maybe our mothers, some of us, if you have older, very old parents and all that, that we were very patient, you know, nini watoto squeezing hamuna patients. Let me ask you, vangapi washaskia, like these old people, vambiana, Huyu ndugeke kwa baba, huyu, mama keni huyu, mama keni huyu, lakini baba keni huyu. Look, they have all these ring around of relations that, that it just shows. Someone was married four times, five times. Mwengine anaoa, kivata, anaoa, kivata, anaoa. So it's not because they had patience. If we really look at how our families are, they're just the same as us. The only difference is that sisi sasa, because of technology, you know, news travels fast. And we are more open. Now, but before, what you nikidogo, so it doesn't look like it's such a big issue, but it's been an issue for generations. We all have half sisters, half brothers, steps, step ninis, you step that, they had that as well, which means this problem didn't start now. This problem started ages ago. The only difference is that now it's become quite big because we are a bigger society. So it's become a lot and it is escalated to eat that, to, to eat that, uh, to it being that we we are seeing it more in young young couples. See into Anka five, ten years and got divorced. No. People get married in three months into a shachana, in six months but to a shachana. And the thing is there are usually children involved in that. And we don't think about it. Women look at it as in we've they've gotten their freedom. Men look at it, I'll just get married to somebody else. And that is how it is. 
So when I say we are the cause of our problems and we need empowerment at this period, we're getting married to when we're married to when we have children. That is where we need the empowerment. Because let me tell you, when before you get married, who is the first person that hints that event, your eventuality as a woman is marriage? Who tells you that? It's not your father, it's not your uncles that walk in and say, ah, ukiolewa, you know, vota kujaolewa, ukipata muma. It's not the men that tell us, it's the women. So they all tell us from that young age that our eventuality, like our, the topmost graduation that we are ever going to have is getting married. Then you have, when you have your, your, your ages like 30s, 29, 30s, 26, at that age, you are so under pressure to get married, you know, because it's been indoctrinated in your head that there's a certain age when you reach, you have to get married. Maya yako etakwisha, hutopata mume, kwa sababu wanaume watafta young ones, so you're becoming too old, when are you going to get married? It's like you're a burden. Ration yani watumia nyingi na nyumba, it's become such a burden now, but... I don't, I don't see the essence of the insistence of us getting married so soon or whatever. And nobody does that but your mother, your aunties, you know, your relatives. When are you getting married? How many of you have been asked at weddings, at functions, at when are you getting married? And when you do get married, when are you getting, giving birth? Whose father or male friend or uncle has asked, Mbona ve hujaza? Mbona ve hujauliva? Nani anaulizwa na manaume? You see, we create these issues for ourselves. Men only jump on the wagon. I mean, if this is what we want, they just jump on it, you know? We can't blame those who jump on it. Let's blame the ones who started this. When you get married and you get physical abuse, when you complain, what's the first thing? You know, nobody sits the both of you down. Let's, let's say, what is going on? What is the problem? No. Kuna camp, wife, kuna na camp, husband. Kila mtu wabuto wake. If you are from a family that really, really, really do not want embarrassment, they'll tell you, go back. Go back. Persevere, go back. Be kind to your husband. Wee nsikize tu mume wako. Wee usishindani. Wee sikiza tu. Wee nyamaza. Wee usifanya, usimprovoke. Vile yani wee tulia tu. Who tells you that? Fathers love their girls. Most fathers love their girls. You know? And no father would want their child to go through hardships. And in most instances, fathers don't know whatever is going on with our lives. They don't know. Mothers choose to hide this. It's veve na maantizako na nani chuku 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 chuku. Paka the problem becomes so big. Now the men are involved when it's already a disaster. And, uh, but if it is you retaliating, like, oh, look, I'm fed up. This guy is beating me up. Let me beat him back again. You know, let me just beat him as well. Uh -huh. What happens? Sasa hunadabu kukufundishwa hishima kwenu. Paka weza kumuinu lia mume wako mkono. Again, no counseling is there. I'll just go back to exactly what I said before when I was talking about the boy child. We do not have avenues for independent counseling at all. And we need to bring that back. We seriously need to bring that back. When your husband cheats on you, sisi wanawake, sisi kwa sisi. When a husband cheats on you, squeeze and yatilia sana kwa ni humoni. Hana makeup, nyele ajatia dava. When was the last time mpaka hina? We, we go to justify the excuse rather than, you know, why is he cheating? It is wrong to cheat. There is no excuse for cheating. Nothing. It would not be haram in the first place. You know, there is no excuse. So before we give these excuses, I told Lizwe, why are you doing this? This is wrong. Before you, you give out your reason as to why you're justifying what you're doing. But no, we will be told you need to be more pleasant. Maybe you're not giving him enough in bed, you know. Uh, maybe siku hizo nkwa mgeuri. All, all sorts of things come up. But let's find out a woman has cheated. What happens there? You are a disgrace to the family. The husband might, not might, the husband will divorce you for that. You know? It's, it's, it's such a phenomenon that um, we tend to say that men, it is a man's nature to cheat. What is the nature of a man? 
we are now comparing a man to a goat. We need to, they need to hump. Constantly, they need to hump. They cannot control themselves. Yeah? So if you give him a single excuse, whatever the reason may be, he goes and he cheats, it's okay, he's a man. He is sinning. If you call me a whore, call a man a whore as well. He's sinning as much as I am sinning as well. It is the same thing. Kidini, it is the same thing. It is our cultures and our society that say that it is okay for a man to cheat. And who says that it is okay for a man to cheat? Who tells you that? Women. Sisi kwa sisi, again. You know, we condemn ourselves. Then we stand up and say, oh my, oh, this is what has been done to us. Be honest. Sisi wanawaki kwa wanake chukizungumza, you know. Mumewaki ya kwa nafanya vya, lakini mwanamki ya kifanya. Unamona, unsikia. You know, it's, it's such a, oh my God, she did this. But we do not have the same outrage when it's a man doing it. We have normalized it. And I mean, men are men for over 100 years. They have not changed. They are the same men. Give him a chance. We women have given them a chance. I mean, sure is no, you know. So we need to change. We need to change how we think towards each other. We need to be much kinder towards each other. We need to stand up for each other. You have mother-in-laws. You need to stand up for your daughter-in-laws. Just because you went through shit, you don't need your daughter to go through shit as well. But who causes these problems? It's not your father-in-law. It's your mother-in-law. It's not your sister, not your brother-in-law that might bring issues. He might follow what your sister-in-laws are doing, you know. But it starts with women against women. So if you want to empower, empower yourselves against ignorant women. Change their thoughts. Advocate for that, you know. But let me tell you, single girls, it's a totally different game when you get married. You enter into, it's not even Game of Thrones. This is like, what's this thing called? Anyway, it's some Greek mythology, just some fighting. It's just totally fighting in there. Like it can't come up. I should have thought of this before, but I can't get it into my head right now. You know? But we are in a constant battle, and we are in a constant battle with each other. When a woman comes home and complains, chances are the man is never held accountable. And for those that feel like they want to hold the men accountable, Jambula Kwanza squeeze with Tambo, Mambe Kwach, Mwach, Mwachi, Hatkushinda Kumlisha, Hatkushinda Kumvisha. But you've not solved it. Have you solved it? You haven't solved the issue. You've left a man to go and bring chaos to somebody else, and you've left you, your daughter to go and give chaos to somebody else. So it, it, it doesn't solve anything at all. To the successful women at their 30s and single, what do you hear? Who follows you and asks you, when are you getting married? You know, there's a nice boy here. You know, you're successful. No one tells you, ah, mashallah, you, you are so successful. You are so established at such a young age. Congratulations, you know. You are a bright young lady. And it ends there. No. Your success is not even seen. I mean, what have you accomplished? You haven't gotten married. You're at 30. You don't have children. I mean, it's an outrage. But the same man at 30 is considered, well, a trophy to have in the family. At a very young age, very successful, mashallah. You know, and jenga na mapema, you know, hakufata mambo mabaya, and shikilia ili njia, ankua, mashallah, chum tafte emke sasa. You know, before somebody else grabs him. But then he can get married at any time. Mutam tafte emke, atachagua, chagua, it is on leisure. But we don't have that leisure, do we? Our eggs are running out. But who does that? Women. Hakuna mwanamume, like I said before that would approach you and ask you, why aren't you married? In fact, men, the men we meet out there, applaud us. They say, oh my God, you're so smart. You're 30, you don't even look 30, you know? Good for you, keep going, you have places to go. But women to women, I'm 30. Ah, maskini, mwenzangu wajauliwa, paka sasa, maskini. Ataka mangana accomplish all that, but then what? She doesn't have anything, you know? We do that to ourselves. Oh, I remember the game I was saying that when you get married, gladiators marriage at the cost is entering the gladiators that's how bad it is so our respect is aligned to a man i remember that when i got divorced and i was alone i was so cautious of where i go what i do who i'm meeting i remember most of the guys now that 
when they meet me now they're like ah skuzile chunkona untukalia usongo you don't talk to us like you are you have this wall you can't meet us out i'm like yes because the next thing i know is one woman just sees me and it goes all the way around tunamona lalana huyu it automatically moves to an lalana huyu an lalana yule an lalana huyu we do that we are not afraid of our tongues e ndimizetu we are not afraid we just easy make up the stories and we, we go along but it is again women women against women when a man loses his wife he can get married in 3 months maskini you know he needs to move on with his life we can't stay for this for long mwanamume atakamke wewe maliza ida yako olebe that guy must have been his boy her boyfriend all along you know ah alikuwa na mume nafikiri alikuwa kenda naye na yule pia hata mume hajaoza ashauliwa tena eh they don't look at it you also want a life men women we all have sexual feelings why would you expect me to rot and stay for like 2 3 years or even 5 years why where is it written that i need to where so we create it it's not religion it's a creation of our own so i'm going to leave it at that we need empowering ourselves women against ignorant women then we can move on and say fine we have fixed ourselves but men are doing a b c d to us i would love to hear your thoughts and your feedback i am not going to be in any camp we need men as much as we need women in our lives our society we need we need both we can't seclude one and say we will go up we won't go up there's there'll be the chain pulling us down we need to be in this together I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you for listening.